All right, we are going to solve a percent decrease problem this time, and, and we're gonna continue the theme of reading that percent decrease problem, representing it pictorially using a tape diagram, and then once we understand the story as it's visually represented in the tape diagram, we're gonna take the values, the numbers, and they look for equivalent ratios in the tape diagram, and we're gonna put them into a table in order to get the answer. It is just fantastic how this way works. So let's get started. All right, so um, what we've got here is a, a shirt, and it says that this shirt is 18, uh, let's see, $18.50, but you have a coupon that lowers the price by 20%. What is the price of the shirt after using the discount so or that coupon so let's let's represent this story and what we're going to do is of course we're always going to begin by using that tape diagram so here's my tape and we know that the entirety of that tape represents 100 percent and then we're going to go back and we're going to read the story and each time we read the story we're going to add to our picture so it says the price of a shirt is $18.50, but you have a coupon that lowers the price. That means this $18.50 was the original whole value that then gets reduced and gets shrunk down. So that $18.50, oh, let's do it in blue. That $18.50 represents the entire original price of the shirt. But that shirt has been reduced in cost by 20%. So what does that look like? I don't know. Well, let's just estimate where 20% might be. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna reduce by 20%. So let's say that that's 20%. And we don't know the how much the actual value of that so i'm going to do a little question mark there we don't know the value that it got reduced the actual dollar amount but we definitely know that it got reduced by 20 percent meaning this is the price of the shirt after the coupon so i'm going to write that down i'm going to squeeze this in and say that this right here is the new price of the t-shirt. So we have a couple of ways, of, of course, not terribly surprising, a couple of ways that we could go about solving this problem. Let's stick with, um, it's kind of a straightforward way. We're gonna take these values and we're gonna insert them into um, a table. All right, so our table is that classic proportion table the x, k, y, x times k gives me y, and we're gonna represent that x column with the whole numbers and the y column with the part. And it doesn't matter how many rows we of equivalent ratios we use. As long as all the ratios in that table are equivalent, we're okay. And then um, let's start filling it in. So I can see that 100% is a whole and its associated part is 20% right here. So 100% is a whole and its associated part is 20. All right, so there we go. And then what other ratio can we put into this table? Uh, well, I see right up here that 1850 is the whole and this unknown amount, that's the coupon, is our part. So let's fill that in and let's go down here and put 1850 is the whole, and I'm gonna put C for our coupon, is that associated part, but we don't know the value of that. Now let's go, let's do it. How do we, how do we go about solving this? Um, well, we can, and I'll, we can find the unit rate by dividing by 100. 
and that gives me 1, which means I'm going to divide the y column by 100, and that gives me 20 hundredths. And then, once I know the unit rate, it's pretty darn easy to get that next value because anything times 1 is itself. So 1 times 1850 gives me 1850. So what am I going to do on that right side? I'm going to also multiply by 1850. And when I do that, what is that going to look like? Well, that's going to be 20 over 100 times 1850 gives me my new val my the coupon portion. Remember, that's going to give me this value right there, the amount that it got reduced by. So how do we multiply? That's going to be a little unorthodox because we're mixing fractions with decimals, but we can do it. We're not afraid. 20 times, and this is going to be 1850 over 1. I can multiply straight across, and that gives me 370 over 100, which gives me 3.7. So what does 3.7 mean? Well, 3.7 represents this value that got cut down. So the price got lowered by 3.7. So it got lowered, so I'm gonna erase this. Whoa! It got lowered by 3.7. What? How much money is that? That's $3.70. So it got lowered by $3.70. So we take the original price, which was $18.50, subtract by 3.7, $3.70. And when we do that math, we get $14.80 is the new price for our shirt. $14.80. If we want to check our work, we can add the new price plus the discount, and that should give us $18.50 again. Now, is that the only way to solve this problem? Absolutely not. There's other ways we could have done it, but let's begin by looking for that horizontal relationship. So, and let's do this in green. All right, so we know 100 times something gives us 20. So using division, we learned that our constant of proportionality is 20 hundredths, which means all we have to do down here is multiply by 20 hundredths. And that's going to give us our answer, but we already did all that work. 1850 times 20 hundredths, that's right here. And we already got that answer of 3.7, which is $3.70. There's other ways we could have solved this problem, but right now I'm, the key is for me to show you how to use a tape diagram to model your understanding of the problem. Take that understanding of the tape diagram and write a bunch of equivalent ratios in the table, and then use whatever table manipulation you want to get to that answer.